hello everyone so welcome to my channel and today we are going to learn about how to print all the sub arrays for a given array so let's jump into it so firstly let's try to understand what a sub array is so this for example let's take a array a and which has some values let's say 5 3 4 2 7 okay Okay, so a sub array will have values. Okay, so sub array is a part of this array only, which should be continuous. And in same order. Okay, so for example. This five here itself is a sub array because it is part of it. This complete sub array is also a sub array. Okay. When I say continuous and in same order, by that I mean, let's say, for example, I take from here five and let's say two and seven. Okay. So these are not continuous. This five is here, two is here, and seven is here. We are skipping some elements in between. So this is wrong. Okay. Even if I take some elements together, let's say three, four, two. Okay, and change their order. Let's say I'm writing two, four, three. So this is also wrong. They are not in the correct order. So the sub array is a part of a array which is continuous and in same order. So valid sub array can be uh, like three itself is a sub array. Okay, and four, two, seven is also a sub array. Okay, this complete array itself is a sub array. Five, three, four, two, seven. This is also a sub array. now let's see how we can print all the sub arrays okay so usually this question seems uh, pretty much simple but uh, people gets very confused into it also so let me take an example again let's say for example i have a array now guys to make it simplify what i will do i will keep the value same as the index okay so for example let's take some array Which is having values zero, one, two, and three. Okay, I'm taking this array which have values zero, one, two, and three. So which is same as the index of this array zero, one, two, three. Now, what are all the sub arrays that can be formed here? So let's see those first. So all the sub arrays are zero itself will be a sub array. Okay. Now we have zero and one is a sub array. Zero, one, two is a sub array. Zero, one, two, and three is a sub array. Okay. Now starting from one is also a sub array. So let's take this one is a sub array. One, two is a sub array. One, two, three is a sub array. Now starting from two, two is also a sub array. Two, three is also a sub array, and finally this three is also a sub array. Okay, now let's try to analyze this problem and see. So usually, while printing all these sub arrays, it should be all in the same line. Okay, let me try to put them in the same line so that we can analyze it properly. Okay, let's put it here. Okay, let's put this also here, and this kind of here. Okay, this error, and finally, this three here. Sorry, guys, for that. Okay, so we have these elements and different different sub arrays. Okay, let me adjust this a little bit. Now, finally, guys, let's see how we can analyze this problem. So, firstly, when we try to print this, usually uh, people take two for loops. One is for this i, and one is this for the jth part. Okay, which is wrong kind of. Okay, it cannot be solved in the using two for loops. Why? Because here you see the size of the array is four n, right? If I try to take two for loops, which is of size four, four into four, it is not possible. Here we have maximum size as four. But downwards we do not have maximum size is four. 
it is greater than 4 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so it is kind of greater than 4 okay so now let's take a two so firstly this part is uh, this array is divided into kind of this different different parts so one is starting from 0 then it is starting from 1 then it is starting from 2 and finally 3 so let's consider that our ith loop will be keeping tracking of this 0 1 2 and 3 so let's take uh, i for this which is here 0 okay and in this part it is 1 and in this part it is 2 and finally it is 3 here okay now for jth part how many times for each i we are printing these zeros okay so for here it is 4 times here it is 3 times here it is 2 times and finally it is 1 time so what is happening guys this i is equals to 0 1 2 3 and j j should run 4 times then 3 times then 2 times then 1 times so what is this so let's try to see if i write my first for loop let me write this first for loop here guys first for loop i will be starting from 0 running up to i is less than n okay i plus plus which is this loop now inside this this jth loop is starting from what guys it should run four times so it is starting from zero okay and j should be running four times initially then three times then two times then one time so what is this formula guys this is nothing but if i is zero and i want j to be four here i is one i want j to be three here i is two and i want j to be two so this is nothing but it is n minus i okay if you see it is 4 minus 4 4 minus 0 is 4 4 minus 1 is 3 4 minus 2 is 2 4 minus 3 is 1 so this is nothing but n minus i okay j plus plus finally for the last loop uh, what we have here we have this final loop which is for this kth part to actually print these values okay to actually print these values so now while printing we need to be very careful like how these are getting printed actually so you see firstly for each of this jth part i am running j for the four times and this kth part it is starting from each time from zero here starting from zero starting from zero starting from zero here it is starting from one starting from one and starting from two two three so which is similar to this ith part this is zero and these all are zeros this is one these all are one okay this is two and these all are two this is three these all are three so simply here my final loop becomes k is equals to what guys is equals to i whatever the value of i is it will be that only okay how long should this uh, kth loop keep on running it should keep on running <coughs> until it is here it should run for the here jth value is uh, 4 okay so it will be running j will be like 0 1 2 and 3 okay here j will be 0 1 2 like that three times four times and here it will be 0 and 1 so finally what i need to do is here i should run my loop equal to zeroth time here i should run my loop equal to oneth time here i should run my loop equal to twoth time okay this is my final part here i should run it from three to three part now here guys i should not run my loop zero to zero time it is zero to one time so what does that mean i need to add this oneth part also okay zero plus one is one okay one plus one is two 2 plus 1 is 3. Finally, here also 0 plus 2 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, and so on. So, this is equal to this part. Equal to what? <coughs> i plus j. 2 plus 0 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. And I need to run it equal to. So, basically, it becomes i plus j. Okay. Finally, k plus plus. So, using this kind of algorithm, we can print all of our subarrays. 
so let's jump into the code part, code section guys and see how it works okay so i've created this sub array template kind of okay so let me take a array a which is equals to and let's take some values 0 1 2 and finally 3 let's take the size of this array int n you can hard code it i will take a dot length so that i can get the size of this array okay now <coughs> i will write my first loop which is int i equals to 0 semicolon i is less than n semicolon i plus plus okay so this was my first loop guys let's uh, look into our algorithm once again so next loop was starting from j is equals to 0 and until if j is less than n minus i we saw this 0 is opposite of 4 1 is opposite of 3 2 is opposite of 2 3 is opposite of 1 so kind of like that so for j is equals to 0 j is less than n minus i so for int j equals to 0 semicolon j is less than n minus i semicolon j plus plus and finally we have the kth loop in kth part we were adding this i and j to get this final result okay the last value i plus j 2 plus 0 is 2 2 plus 1 is 3 okay and it is starting from i 0 0 1 1 2 2 3 3 cool so let's see 4 int k is equals to 0 semicolon k is less than i plus not less than guys i have to use equal to here i plus j semicolon k plus plus now simply i will print these values for k and it should work fine so let me use this not println firstly i have to print them in the same line so i will be using print here uh, so let's take some values which is a of k after each value i will print some blank space okay once i'm completely print once I completely print my one of the sub array, I should uh, go to my next line. So I will be using this system dot out dot println to go into the next line. So that's it guys about this code. Let's uh, try to run this and see if it works. So let's see. So I'm running this, which is printing this but kind of made some error here. Okay. So what did I made the error? Let's see. K is less than equals to. Okay, K should not be equal to zero, guys. I told you K should start from I. Okay, I made a silly mistake. Let's run it once again. Cool. Now it is working fine. Awesome. So we can see all the sub is printed here. I just took an example of this one to take simpler values. Let's see the example of the earlier array that we took. Five, three, four, two, seven. Okay. So let's change these values 5, 3, 4, 2, and 7. Okay, let's try to run this and see. Okay, awesome, guys. We are able to get over all the sub arrays, guys. Okay, so that's it, guys. This is how you can print all the sub arrays for a given array. So, this is kind of an important question. This is very basic, but uh, many people get stuck into it. So you can please go ahead and study about this and thank you for joining us guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care.